So I want to talk a little bit about uh, working in challenging locations with your dog. And I've got Fred out here to demo. Um, we just got out of the car and a motorcycle uh, started up. A lot of noise. You can probably hear it in the background there. Got a little shake off from Fred there. Fred's actually really experienced and you can see him just kind of taking this in. Um, there's a car coming right there. Got Fred there. Got a motorcycle. Come on, bub. And Fred's just keeping an eye out for me and, and responding pretty well to things. Uh, what I can do to make Fred more comfortable is I can walk over here. This will work for most dogs, but not all dogs. Um, put them with their back to a building. Uh, doors can be problematic because, as you can see, Fred can smell that that's a door. And he likes to go inside buildings and do a little nose work. So, and of course, also with doors, you can have people coming in and out. So, here we got another door and another door. This door isn't used very much, and I can stand here in the corner, good boy, with Fred, and I can just hang out and let him see from at a safe place all of the things that are going on. And because we're in the corner, you can see there's a wall and there's a wall. I'm actually in a corner here. He only has to keep track of things on one side. So this is a really useful technique for reducing stress when you are outside working on uh, outside triggers with your dog. You'll want to be careful to keep your eyes out. We're walking out of our little protected area and we're going to look around the corner. We're going to look over here and then we're going to come this way. And again, walking down this wall, he only has to pay attention to things over there, not over here. So much, much calmer. And with a wall like this, there's very little chance of anybody popping out and scaring us. So if you've got a people reactive dog, a wall with outdoors, now there's a door, I can easily just move at a 45 degree angle away from that door and just give myself the same space from the door as I need. A 10, 12 feet is usually pretty good. Good boy. Out here there's more green space and there's a road. So green space is often good for them to sniff in. You can see his nose drop right there. He's already sniffing. This is a good way for them to enjoy life and have a little opportunity to look around and see interesting things without... <laughs> he must have found a dog poop there. Um, without being overwhelmed. So we've got the road there, but we got this green space and we got a wall. For some dogs, that's going to be too much. Oh, Fred, this way. For Fred, nah, he could handle a, a full-blown circus and he'd be pretty good with it. Whoa. Fred, whoa. Come on, bud. That said, whoa. good boy. Even Fred, when he's out here for a little while, um, he'll stop taking treats. Now, his body language is still good. He's still fairly happy. But like when we were in the vet's office, I asked him to get up on the scale, and he said, sure, but he refused to take a treat. So that was a really good indicator to me that despite the fact that his body language is good, he is still a little bit concerned. You can't throw treats at a drowning man. Now, they were low-value treats, so not a big deal. Really good way to assess your dog. Look at this. This is the second time we've been down this uh, row, and he's moving faster because it's, it was boring to him. So if I needed a spot to hang out and chill out, I can use that. I can move away from our chill-out spot, and then I can come, good boy, I can come back to our chill-out spot and it is even more relaxing when I come back to it because they recognize it as being a safe place. So rather than staying in one spot, it's often a good idea 
to leave and then come back. Okay, and here we go. That's a good starter for your first lesson, or first five or ten times, going into new locations. <laughs>